Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. So welcome to my video. So in this video, I will explain uh, chapter 6, uh, CHM256, which is uh, Gravimetry Analysis. So this is the video part 1. So this is the analogy. You can, you can read it by your own. This is the diagram for gravimetry analysis. Uh, Sometimes uh, you maybe don't know what is the gravimetry analysis. So gravimetry analysis is the another process, another analysis compared with uh, volumetry analysis for chapter 5. Okay, so volumetry analysis is using solution. Okay, you need to do the titration and at the equilibrium or when the when the reaction is uh, occur what happened you got the the change of color for the solution and you get the result of your uh, analysis but for gravimetry analysis in this process you need to do a reaction in which you will produce a precipitate okay and after you got the precipitate you can filter and you can calculate by using a certain calculation so are we going deeply into this uh, chapter so this is the uh, step by step how to do a gravimetry analysis so i will explain it here at the next slide so what is the course outline for this uh, chapter so we're starting with the principle of gravimetry analysis and then we go into types of gravimetry analysis and then step of gravimetry analysis with the example of gravimetry analysis and then a calculation of gravimetry analysis and also you need to know what is the application for gravimetry analysis. So this is the chapter outline the same as the I explained before so you can read this uh, by your own. So gravimetry analysis by principles is the technique in which the amount of analyte what is the analyte analyte is the ion in the solution okay ion in the solution you can uh, analyze that ion okay so how to analyze the ion so the analyte of the solution can be determined by convert that analyte to some product so the product is a precipitate and that precipitate uh, is a solid form Okay, so from a liquid form or analyte, you change to the product or the solid state and you can measure by mass. So in gravimetry analysis, is the analysis is based on the measurement of mass. So by using the analytical balance instrument that are uh, very accurate and precise, so you get the result, a very, very accurate result. So the gravimetry analysis is the most accurate method of chemical analysis uh, when compared to volumetric analysis. So why uh, gravimetric analysis is more accurate compared to uh, volumetric analysis is uh, when you're doing a volumetric analysis, you need to use your eyes okay, by, uh, by look at the uh, solution when the stoichiometry uh, equal the equal the stoichiometry is uh, equilibrium or when the equation is done so what happened to the uh, reaction there are a change of color because you uh, put the indicator inside the solution so the indicator will change the color from a to b and some people okay got the different maybe uh, it depends to the uh, eyes it depend for when the when the uh, the change of color happen. So compared to the gravimetric analysis, the uh, the analysis is done when you collect the precipitate and then you filter and you uh, measure what mass of the precipitate and the mass of the precipitate is uh, very accurate. So this is the procedure for gravimetric analysis. So we start in with a preliminary treatment. Preliminary treatment is the preparation of the solution. So before you start the gravimetry analysis, you need to prepare the solution. Okay, you need to prepare the solution and make sure the condition is uh, suitable for that uh, analyte or for that solution. And next is the precipitating or precipitation of precipitate. 
after that is the digestion process and then you filter the uh, precipitate which is you separate the precipitate and then wash in after that you dry in or ignite the precipitate and next is your weight the precipitate after you weight the precipitate your calculation the amount of precipitate and you compare by the calculation uh, that's I will explain in the next video okay so this is the same diagram uh, we start with analyte and the last one is the calculation okay the schematic diagram of uh, proper procedure in gravimetric analysis so same the schematic diagram for this slide okay so what is the successful requirement for gravimetric analysis so this is the successful requirement for gravimetric analysis which is the first you need to identify the insolute form of analyte okay which is the precipitate or the analyte uh, in the solution so you need to identify what analyte in the solution and what precipitate you will get at the end of the analysis okay because uh, if you know the analyte and if you know the precipitate or uh, the product at the end of the analysis you can use the uh, calculation okay you can use the calculation and you can use the formula to calculate uh, the amount of precipitate and the amount of uh, analyte inside the solution next is what is the successful, re successful requirement uh, of gravimetric analysis separate the analyte from any constituent that may interference or what we can say is we can separate the analyte from any uh, impurities okay the any impurities that disturb the analysis and then how to get the successful requirement you wash the precipitate free of impurities and co-precipitate which is we wash and dry the precipitate and the last one is convert the precipitate to a stable weighting form which is weight okay so the application so uh, you need to know what's the application uh, for gravimetric analysis so uh, application for gravimetric analysis is to determine okay to determine the inorganic species uh, for example an ion chloride ion sulfate ion uh, cation which is for example iron and sodium and also you can determine uh, the neutral species in sample for example you can also determine uh, the amount of water in the sample you can also determine the amount of uh, SO2 uh, CO2 carbon dioxide and also iodide and also you can use the gravimetric analysis by application you can determine the organic sample for example you can determine the lactose how many lactose uh, about the amount of lactose it make uh, the amount of cholesterol in cereal acid amino in food and then this is the advantages and disadvantages for gravimetric analysis compared to uh, another analysis so the advantages of the gravimetric analysis is no calibration need compared to a uh, volumetric analysis you need to calibrate okay calibrate uh, for example pipette you need to as a uh, calibrate burette and so on so no standardization require okay compared to the volumetric analysis sometimes you need to standardize the solution okay and then the uh, advantages for gravimetric analysis is also the result is calculated directly from the experimental data obtained and less messy compared to other method and the result obtained is very accurate because it only requires the an accurate analytical balance and also uh, this uh, gravimetric analysis can be applied to a macro or the sample uh, the large the large scale of sample and for these advantages for gravimetric analysis is it requires long experimental hour due to the step of heating or drying sometimes you need to heat in or you need to dry in uh, the sample the precipitate you need to dry in uh, inside the by using the oven okay by using the oven uh, for 24 hours okay because uh, by using the oven sometimes you need to use uh, the temperature not very high to uh, to avoid the precipitate 
to be vaporized or to become an unstable condition. So next is the type of method for gravimetric analysis. So there are two types of gra uh, gravimetric analysis, two types of method, which is the precipitation method, and next one is the volatilization method. So in this chapter, I will explain detail about precipitation method. And for volatilization method, I will explain uh, as general uh, for the volatilization method. So we are not going deeply into the volatilization method. So this is the general, okay, this is the general explanation for the gravimetry, uh, gravimetry uh, analysis. So for gravimetry analysis, we are going deeply into the precipitation method. So in this uh, chapter, we are going to focus more into a precipitation method. So what is the precipitation method? By definition, the analyte is converted to a spherically solute precipitate. So spherically solute precipitate is by easy uh, notes, okay, by easy remember, to, easy, to easier remember, we convert the analyte, okay, we convert the analyte into a precipitate. Then the precipitate is, we make sure the precipitate is not uh, insoluble precipitate, okay, and that precipitate is e easier to be filtered, uh, easier to be washed, and when we wash the precipitate, we want to remove the impurities. Sometimes the impurities attached to the precipitate. Okay, and then after we wash, we convert to a stable and non composition by acceptable heat treatment. And then the product is weight. For example, in precipitation method, uh, this is the example to determination to determine the chlorine or Cl- in aqueous solution. So the, the step is simple. We need the sample solution and we add in the precipitating region. So the function for precipitating region is to re-add. Okay, so precipitating region, we re-add with the analyte that we need and to produce the precipitate. Okay, so for example, uh, in this reaction, and ECL is the, uh, the reactant or the analyte inside the solution. So we put the precipitating reagent, which is silver nitrate. So silver nitrate uh, react as precipitating reagent. And what happened in the reaction? Silver from silver nitrate we attach to the chlorine, to the chloride ion in, uh, as an analyte. So when we add with analyte ion, it will produce silver chloride. So the silver chloride will precipitate and we can collect this uh, precipitate and we can weight and we can calculate the amount of sodium, uh, sorry, the amount of chlorine in the solution. So this is the explanation for the, uh, for the, uh, for the analysis to determination of chlorine ion. So we measure accurately the sample of sodium chloride sample and we dissolve, we dissolve to be a solution. So first, okay, we got the analyte. So analyte, uh, sometimes analyte is from the solid sample. So from solid sample, we produce an analyte, okay, and then uh, we add, okay, we adding a precipitating reagent, which is silver nitrate to the solution. So when we add in the silver, the silver nitrate, what happened? The chloride ion we attach with the silver ion and produce a silver chloride. So this silver chloride is filtered by using a filter paper and then we dry and wait. So the weight of precipitating containing chloride ion is determined by subtraction of the known weight of the filter paper. So the chloride contents, which is the analyte, is then calculated in form of silver chloride. Another types of method. For this method, I'm just going uh, as a general, okay, the general information, the general knowledge about this method, which is volatilization method. So by definition, the analyte or its decomposition product are volatilized at suitable temperature. So the volatilized product is then collected and weighed or alternatively, the weight of the product is determined indirectly from the weight loss of the sample. 
So we look at this example to determination of the sodium hydrogen carbonate content of antacid tablet. So we put the sample into uh, into the first. Okay, this is the first. We put the sample inside a um, this uh, this this flask. Okay, this flask we put a sample. So the sample is bicarbonate, and we react with sulfuric acid. So after we add with sulfuric acid, it will produce a water vapor, water vapor and carbon dioxide. So the water vapor and carbon dioxide will go in into a drying tube. Okay. So when going into a drying tube, this drying tube contain a calcium sulfate, atau dipanggil sebagai dry diet. So calcium sulfate will attach or will absorb the water molecule. So, at the end of the reaction, there are the mass of uh, calcium sulfate, okay, calcium sulfate and water. So, we minus the calcium sulfate at the beginning of the reaction. So, the comparison, we got the amount of water uh, in the reaction. So, it's, this is the uh, explanation of the process. We weigh the quantity of the finally ground sample. And then we react with sulfuric acid to convert the sodium hydrogen carbonate to carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so we got the calcium, the carbon dioxide and water. So after this reaction, it's still going into the flask that containing the absorb the absorbent. So the absorbent will absorb. Okay, we absorb the water. Okay, so the difference in weight of the tube before and after absorption is used to calculate the amount of sodium hydrogen carbonate from the beginning of the reaction. So this is just the example for insoluble compound. So insoluble compound, there are many types of insoluble compound. Okay, either they become in a in a in a dalam bentuk, okay, dalam bentuk gel. Okay, sometimes your insoluble compound in a in a position of uh, solid, the hardness solid, and sometimes in uh, in uh, dalam bentuk powder, dan sometimes dalam bentuk gel. So, if the precipitate is not dissolved bad into the solution, so we call it insoluble compound. So that's all for part one. So thank you.